Welcome to Bad Idea Metals. Um, I'm Anthony, and those that have been following the channel for a little while know that I am making a battery. So I'm trying to make a battery for a solar panel setup on the back shed where I typically do my work. I'll show you in just a second, but we've been under some pretty bad storms recently, a lot of bad weather, freezing weather, things like that. Today, the freezing has turned into rain, and so it's really soupy and messy back there. So I'm gonna explain what I'm showing you here uh, and, and a new thing that I have got. So real quick, these are 18650 cells that I've gotten from laptop batteries. I spent months, starting at the beginning of the summer, charging them up four at a time. That took about, I don't know, three hours on average for each set that I did. And then using this, this um, B6 AC uh, discharger and te battery tester, um, I was able to do them one at a time. That took about two to three hours. So all together, it took me, let's just say three hours to charge them and about 12 hours at the most to discharge all of them. A total of about, you know, 15 or so, 15 hours. Let's just say 15 hours. And that's me paying attention to take them out of the charger and put them over on the discharger. And then I'd write the number on them and then I'd get a, a batch of cells that I am happy with for my, my 84 cell battery. It would end up being a 24 volt battery and you can see the video where I accidentally damaged my last one and uh, I had to start over. So here you can see I've got a good number of cells. It's hard to give you a good view of all of them, but I've got about a hundred cells that I can start working with. So after I damaged the last battery, I decided it's time to start over, but I had to do something better. This just takes too long for how many I have to do. Now I apologize. It's not gonna be the best picture or the best location for this video, but um, unfortunately the wall adapter isn't very long and I didn't think to put it on an extension cord. But this is the XTAR VC8 Plus, and I love it. It does everything that the other one did, well, my other setup, and it did it without me having to take them out too many times. The right four slots can only charge. It can do a few other things, like do uh, resistance testing and things like that, but really all I need it to do is to give them a good charge while this side is doing what it does. So right here, where it says grad, it stands for grade. It's gonna grade the batteries. So real quick, you can see there's a whole bunch of things flashing at me. One, this one is done. What they do on this side is it will take a battery, charge it all the way up to full, discharge it all the way down to a safe discharge value, and then charge it back up to a good midpoint voltage. So this one is claiming it's done and the total amp hours is 1,569 uh, milliamp hours. Um, you can see that this one's still charging up, this one's still charging up. So those values are no longer flashing. They used to flash as it was discharging. Right now I can take these batteries out because they are telling me the, the number of amp hours in milliamps that these four batteries can contain. Um, so my new process, it's pretty simple. I'll put four batteries in on this side. It'll charge it all the way up, discharge it all the way down, and then it will charge it all the way up unless I stop it because I really don't care for it to be fully charged again. These guys, it looks like they're pretty close to being done. So I'll stop them now. However, before I stop them, I'm gonna write on them what their capacity is. Let's hop over here. As you can see, I've been already doing several batches. Uh, let's see, today is a Thursday. This device came on a Monday. It came uh, two and a half days ago. And in two and a half days, let's see how many we've done. Okay, so I just did a quick count. I've got 24 batteries in about two days. So if, you, if you're following along, my 84 battery count 
um, it should only take me about a week instead of my entire summer. So I'm really loving the fact that I made this purchase. I've got a link for the Amazon page that I bought it from. I'm sure you can get it through other vendors or other places, but this XTAR VC8 Plus, I really like it. So here's, here's one of the things that I really like about it over the last thing that I had. That last charger that I had, they all would charge at the same exact rate. I wanna show you that that's not gonna be true about this. Each one of these is going to be on its own channel. Now, because of the, the power input, it has a maximum based off of how many are plugged in. You can also see that it auto detected that this was lithium ion. It can do nickel metal hydride. I don't believe it can do the lithium iron phosphates, but it does have an element of auto detect. You can also fit different sizes in here. So it knows how far it's supposed to go. I don't know how it does that. Maybe it has to do with where the springs location is. I don't know, but it's able to do all sorts of sensing and it knows what type of battery I have in the, in the charger. So I'm gonna quickly write down the amps on these guys, the amp hours, and then I'm gonna show you the next step on how I do this. All right, so this is the collection of all the batteries we've done. Let's go ahead and pluck these guys out. Shoot them across the room. And if you've been paying attention in my other battery videos, I like to keep the positive terminals all together on the same side as I store them. The positive terminals have that little ridge. And so we're going to make sure that they're all facing the same direction. Um, I think if you're, if you're careful with your batteries, you shouldn't have any issues such as um, short circuiting or, or damaging your batteries. Um, just one more way of being careful is you just make sure they're all lined up. Um, as you tend to be more careful with your batteries, you may be more careful with all the other elements of, of doing all of your charging, discharging, and storing needs. Anyway, let's move on. So we don't know the amps on these guys. So we're gonna stick those batteries in. Now I could put a completely uncharged battery in here and it can go through its process. The reason why I do this pre-charge is then I don't have to wait for this side to charge them all the way up. They already are pretty close to a full charge. So that's super helpful because then I don't have to wait for this side as long. Oh, and right here, you can already see it. So it's already trying to fill this green battery at 600 milliamps per hour. And it's fluctuating between six and 620. And then, oh, that one just flipped over. It was about 440, but now it's starting to do the discharge test. It's a little disconcerting to me that the 4.01 volt is where it's starting, but we will let it go through this test and we'll see what its milliamps are at the end. But it's got one milliamp having been drained from this blue battery. So we'll let that do its thing as we continue to move these charged batteries over. And it detected lithium ion, which is correct. It's gonna to try to charge them up and then it will start to discharge them. So, let's see, yep, that one just switched over and so did that one. So now these two are also discharging and this one seems to want to charge up a little bit more before it starts to do the discharge test. So we're gonna let those go. Let me grab a few more batteries from my collection over here. Well, let's see. Let's pick these green ones. They look like good candidates. We'll come back over. And you can see it's easily marked positive terminals at the top. So let's put our positive terminal up on top and take a look. It's gonna start charging at 440. And there's all these tape, glue, and sticky things that are on it from when it was a battery for the laptop. I, uh, you gotta make sure that they're not gonna obstruct your ability to charge, so just check them. Oh, it's claiming that this battery right here is full and that battery, and I don't believe it. So I might have to do more testing with these batteries. I have a feeling this one's gonna join it. Yep, sure did. So they might be full. 
And the ones that claim that they're full, I've been putting in this bin over here and uh, we'll get to those ones last. Let me grab a different four. Fine, so if the green ones are already done, let's grab these cool orange ones. What are these? Unison? I'm not even sure. But there's uh, four of them, let's grab those four. You don't have to do them in, in any specific uh, batch. Uh, that, weird, that weird rubber stuff on it. It's not gonna hurt it, but I don't want it to get in the way. But uh, what I was saying is you don't really have to do these in a batch. Like you can see, I've got mixed cells right here and it doesn't matter. However, I, I like it. I like to do them all together because then I can start comparing. If they came out of the same battery, then there's a good chance that they'll have about the same amp hours uh, capacity wise. So it's, it's fun for me to do a comparison side by side instead of have to dig them out and see if I can find the common ones. So that's just a personal preference for me. Uh, you can see right here that it's already at 4.2 volts and it's pretty close to full as well. So we'll let these go. These are probably gonna flip over and say they're full as well, but that's what we're gonna do. That one's still charging up and this, these three right here are discharging. Uh, this process will take, because of how slow this goes, this process will take about six to eight hours total, which is helpful to have them already charged off to the side. Um, but in six hours, I can have four done instead of days. <laughs> I can't tell you how much simpler this is. And I've got, I, well, I just added four more to this batch. Anyway, that's my quick video. Um, as I'm waiting for the weather outside to improve, um, I'm going to continue charging and discharging these batteries. And hopefully by the end of January, I will be able to recreate the battery that I destroyed in December, which is actually pretty cool that I'm, I'm already about a quarter of the way, if not a third of the way back. Well, if you're still watching at this point, you might as well subscribe. We do some pretty fun stuff on this channel. Um, this is just one of the things uh, when the weather improves and isn't quite so messy, I am processing about three and a half pounds of gold pins. Um, I haven't processed pins like these before, so this is a this is a trial and error video that you guys will get to see. I don't know how much gold's in it, but I'm optimistic that it's going to be a good amount. But uh, I'll, I'll show I'll show that as soon as I can finish it, and I can't finish it until the weather improves. Have a good night. Uh, happy New Year to all of you. It's now 2022, and uh, I'm really excited to keep going. Good night.